So would you say in a way that then you teach your clients how to become more in tune with themselves, how to yeah. listen to their inner voice? Yes. That, so it's a, it's a two-way process, you know. Um, so I am a yogi. I've been doing yoga for, for many, many years. Um, I'm, I'm certified in, in, in all sorts of techniques. Okay. Um, but at the same time, you know, I am a scientist. I love science. I love facts. I love statistics. Which is an interesting combination. I mean, yeah. from a scientist. It's like, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, so, look, my PhD topic was on masculinity and emotions oh, wow. in high security prison facilities. So I went into a prison, I started teaching yoga inside the prison. And that's how I got to know the prisoners and you know, the whole topic developed. But it was that where I found, you know, like really interesting where a lot of people told me, you're crazy, this is not going to work. They're not going to be perceptive to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm like, you are actually all wrong. Let me prove you wrong. Kingdom Manish is the founder of the Ziva Way, an online consulting management firm serving clients that are on the verge of stepping into full-time self-employment or are planning on bringing their company to the next step. An intuitive approach combined with a background in social psychology, business development, and sustainability allows them to educate, guide, and empower their clients, creating strategy to organize, grow, and develop a path for fulfilled and purposeful success. Now, here's your host of the Entrepreneurial Vibration Show, Sandy V. Terry. Technically, till I finished my master's degree, I would always try to do project work in different sectors within industry. I mean, I worked for a bank, I worked in emerging acquisition, I worked in a marketing company, uh, I would take on my own clients, I worked for the city and the government. Um, I would really, especially in, in my 20s, I would take on anything. Because I, honestly, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Right. You know, the you one thing is like you were testing the waters, like you did not yeah. prevent yourself. You gave yourself yeah. the opportunity to keep trying and seeing what was it that you wanted to do, right? Yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Beautiful. And I mean, and there were, you know, and there were a lot of um, situations where I just learned, okay, this is something that I actually don't like. This exactly. is something that I don't agree with, you know. I mean, at some stage, um, I even started working for a labor union. Uh -huh. I was part of a la labor union where I would just do um, during the year like assessments and I would go in and help out young people that just started to work to understand the labor laws in Germany. Right. And then support them, you know, in order to, for example, claim, you know, uh, or uh, get claims against the employer if they were not paying them fair. I really tried everything, but that is not necessarily always a good thing depending on which culture you are in. <laughs> you know, like coming from Germany where everyone is kind of like straightforward, you know, preferably, you know, already at the age of 10 that you want to be a doctor and you're going on that pathway. I didn't have that pathway. Right, right. And um, I don't regret it. I did question it along the pathway quite often. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, here I am. I'm going to be turning 35 this year, which is scary. <laughs> <laughs> but I have this tremendous you know, skill set, like, right. you know, like worst case scenarios, I can't survive on my own. <laughs> with yes, anything. exactly. And I'm glad that you don't regret it because, um, I mean, there is no mistakes in life, right? We go through life and we actually, those are lessons learned. Everything that we go through life, we may yeah. not see it at that very moment um, as we're going through it, but um, later on, when we look back, there is definitely a lesson to be learned from everything that we do. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so definitely there is some sort of skill set that you had acquired. There is uh, people that you met that touched you in a way, or maybe people that you touched that you had to come across um, in, in that you had to teach something to them. So absolutely, there is, there is a, a reason for everything that happens in life, I, I, I strongly believe. There's that one saying, you know, that at the end of your life, you're not going to be regretting the things that you have done, but you will regret the things that you haven't done. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Um, and, and I also um, heard that you um, also worked or did some work for nonprofit organizations as well, or still do. 
right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I started in 2012. So that's now skipping a couple of years ahead. Um, right. I moved to South Africa in 2011. Mm -hmm. after I stayed there for six months as an exchange student with the Nelson Mandela University. Yep. Um, and that's, though, I do need to tell you that story. Yeah, yeah, we love to hear about <laughs> it. I would love to hear a, about it. Um, and people are laughing about that. But so in 2009, a professor, a visiting professor came to, um, to Germany, to my university, and at, at the end of his semester, he said, hey, why don't you want to come, you know, to South Africa as an exchange student? And I was just like looking at him and I'm like, you know what, nice offer, but I'm vegetarian. I'm into yoga, you know, <laughs> what am I going to do in South Africa? <laughs> so this offer came also with a scholarship. And I was like, you know what, it would be actually nice to not to have to worry for six months. Mm -hmm. So I took it and I went down to South Africa. And absolutely fell in love after two weeks with the country. I mean, so much that after spending uh, 10 months in total in Africa, I went back, finished my master's degree, took mm -hmm. all, all the jobs for three months that I could take on, really everything. I mean, I was, I was working from Monday till Sunday. I mean, and I would like work till two or three o'clock in the night, would save all that money, sold everything that I had and moved in June 2011 wow. to South Africa. What were you doing while you were there? Oh, okay. So for the first, uh, for the first three months, I wasn't really doing anything except for reconnecting with a couple of professors at the university okay. and just checking out um, the opportunities and possibilities for me. And then I uh, got offered a teaching pos uh, position at the Nelson Mandela University. So I started teaching mm -hmm. and started also working as a freelancer consulting with a couple of German companies that would prepare some of their expats to send them to Germany. So I would do cultural training and language training with them in order to prepare them for Germany. Wow. And then... Um, with that, I started to meet a lot of people, started to, you know, just, just get around a little bit and uh, met Ian Domisi. And uh, Ian Domisi, is a, he's an architect. He is a, one of my closest friends now with his wife. And he, we were sitting in the kitchen and talking and uh, he told me about the concept of building with bottles that are stuffed with uh, non-recyclable material. The brick. Can you show us yeah. one? Because I, uh, I can. I can. Do you? I will have to. I will have to run out into the garage and get one. <laughs> because I saw one of your videos where you were actually stuffing one. Yes. Uh, yeah. For those of you watching, um, basically the concept is you take one of the plastic bottles, and once it's empty, you start stuffing the bottle uh, with recycled materials, and it becomes a brick. It's so heavy that it becomes a brick. <clears throat> yeah right um so you can see it on my on my instagram feed on my website i will be uh i'm posting more about uh, about that right there is a video there yeah um so so you're officially um building those creating those bricks now and um what what do you do with them well we collected over the years eighteen thousand eco bricks uh, we are currently working on the on a really big project. It's the first two-story eco brick building in the world, so it's going to be a two-story school made out of those bricks. You know, because honestly, the so the nonprofit work is what taught me the most. Okay, in all of it, um, just because. We had to, you know, I mean, find a lot of team members very quickly, manage communities. And I mean, by managing communities, like 100, 200 people at a time at workshops. Mm -hmm. and, um, having a nonprofit, I mean, a lot of people, you know, confuse nonprofit with not being able to a, achieve something or maybe not making money. Though we are not making money <laughs> right now with a nonprofit. <laughs> but you achieve a lot. But, <laughs> you achieve a lot. Yes, but we are achieving a lot. And um, of course, if you are, uh, if you have a nonprofit organization, you could also be earning, you know, a salary with it. So there are tons of people that I've met in the nonprofit world that would, uh, or that, that are earning actually a good, decent salary, you know, but at the same time, they are doing the things that are, that they really love. 
Right. So with the, uh, so, um, Ian and I and two other members, we formed officially in 2012 the EcoBrick Exchange Project in South Africa. And it has been running since then. So we always, you know, give ourselves like a pat on the back for being able to survive, you know, seven years in the nonprofit world because that's really not easy. Wow. And um, we were awarded with the United Nations Seed Award in 2015. Congratulations. Oh, my God. Yeah, I went to Kenya to pick it up. You know, it was very exciting. Uh, in the meantime, we received a couple of other architectural rewards, you know, that th thanks to Ian, because Ian has done a truly a tremendous job with the architectural uh, work on that part. Mm -hmm. And we've been, you know, slowly going. And uh, everyone that is part of the nonprofit organization is also at the same time an uh, entrepreneur and has his own business, you know. So that's, it's quite interesting because we've been, you know, just learning along the way. And along the way, that's when you're actually starting to really truly learn a lot of things. Right. Right. I mean, and that's what people kind of like underestimate. To your most recent, you know, entrepreneurial experience now, the Ziva way. Yeah. Um, is, is your consulting service agency for entrepreneurs uh, that wants to create a sustainable and thriving business mm -hmm. and is getting emotionally organized. Yeah. Right. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, so the concept really falls back on uh, my, my PhD research where mm -hmm. I started um, digging a little bit deeper into understanding what emotions are and how people are understanding emotions. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's truly about understanding that a, emotions are constantly everywhere in every communication and interaction that we're doing throughout the day. So there is no such thing as a non-emotional interaction. So, you know, I mean, and I think that was one of the most important things that I've kind of also realized for myself because especially as a woman, you know, when you work somewhere in the industry or you, you know, you're, you're working uh, in the corporate environment, how often will you hear that you as a woman, you are too emotional? <laughs> right. You know? yes. And that you shouldn't be emotional. You should be just rational. Like, right, you should be just right. rational. And so it's impossible for a human being to be just rational. There's right. no such thing. Everything that we are doing, you know, we're doing it according to how we also feel about something. We have a heart. We have a heart. We have feelings. We have a heart, of course. And, you know, and we have an ego on the other side, you know, that will yeah. <laughs> pull us into one or the other direction. Yeah. So um, quite often, you know, I've realized working with people um, and consulting also with smaller businesses is that people will sometimes act um, because of the wrong feelings. You know, and they don't understand necessarily if this is something that they truly want or that's something that's, that's really, truly good for them. And especially in the world that we live right now with all the social media around you where you're constantly being blasted with all the photos and videos and people, you know, I mean, I, that, that concept where people are constantly posting, you know, earn, uh, follow my concept and you will earn a six figure, you know, income and that's going to make you happy, <laughs> you know? Yeah, right, right. Like, you know, I'm like, okay, so A, what does it mean to have a six-figure income? And does it really going to make you happy? Because research shows that, you know, there's a, I think you need to earn around in the U.S. It's about $75,000 a year. And if you earn more than that, you're not becoming happier. Right. So, Yeah. <clears throat> So it's truly, you know, like understanding when you're starting a business, what do I want to do and how do I feel about something? So do I want to do something because this is what everyone is telling me to do? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to go on the pathway because I'm really going to follow my dreams and this is something that I feel good about? Mm -hmm. And yes, the first one might be, you know, you might be able to earn money a little bit quicker. But with the second one, you're going to be happier and it's going to be easier, you know, to go through difficult situations. And as you know, you know, in entrepreneurship, we all encounter difficult situations and we all oh, encounter, yeah. you know, tasks that uh, we don't want to do. Just, just because you're creating your own business, that doesn't mean that you won't have to do anything anymore that you don't want to do, right? Mm -hmm preparing your taxes, you know, still like keeping all the invoices. Even if you have a bookkeeper, you have to still, you know, do certain things. Right. 
So that, that are just small examples, but it's truly about making calculated t- decisions, but also understanding where you're coming from and how you're feeling about it. Yeah. This but, is really interesting because I've seen a lot of coaches that take the, you know, just the traditional entrepreneur approach that they teach you the processes, if you will. Yeah. Um, and then you see other um, coaches that they teach you kind of like the mindset part mm-hmm. of the business, but you're teaching also the feeling. Like yes. become aware of how you're going to feel. It's not only the processes, it's not only the mindset, but it's also the heart. It is how are you going to feel throughout the process? And is there is going to be, you know, logically you know good bad and ugly and there is going to be but be aware of your feelings throughout your entrepreneurial journey and by being aware then identified if that is how you want to one continue feeling and two how are you going to address those feelings to then come out on the other end successfully right yeah yeah yes And, you know, as you said, you know, in the beginning of our conversation, you said you want me to feel comfortable throughout our conversation. Correct. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's a really important thing, you know. So if you are, for example, you are on, on, you know, you are on the lookout for new clients. Right. I always say you have to feel comfortable working with these clients. Right. If you have a client, you know, I mean, and I, and I had that also in the recent, uh, in the recent months where I said yes to something, even though I actually knew kind of like that this is not going to be necessarily the right step for me or it's not going to be good for me. Right. And if I would have listened to my feelings, you know, if I would have listened that I'm becoming already in conversations with them, kind of not nervous, but stressed. Right. I, I knew that the entire process is going to be really extremely stressful. And yes, you know, maybe the job is going to be paid well and all of that. But at the same time, I lost sleep over it you know I mean I was stressed and if I would have had said no right. I might have found a different client maybe some of them would have paid less but I would have been happier and could have created in the meantime in the time that I've lost now right. things that that are actually good for me in my business so would you say in a way that then you teach your clients how to become more in tune with themselves how to yeah. listen to their inner voice yes that so it's a it's a two way process you know um so i am a yogi i've been doing yoga for for many many years um mm-hmm. i'm i'm certified in 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 all sorts of techniques okay um, but at the same time you know i am a scientist i love yeah. science i love facts i love statistics which is an interesting combination i mean yeah. from a scientist it's like yeah it's you know i mean so look my PhD topic was on masculinity and emotions oh, wow. in high security prison facilities. So I went into a prison, I started teaching yoga inside the prison. And that's how I got to know the prisoners and, you know, the whole topic developed. But it was that where I found, you know, like really interesting where a lot of people told me, you're crazy, this is not going to work, they're not going to be perceptive to it. Hmm. Well, I'm like, you are actually all wrong. So sorry about that one. But even, you know, so it's, um, there is a, of course, and then, I mean, more and more science is proving a lot of the techniques that we know in yoga that they are working, especially, you know, with brain wiring, you know, just calming down your, uh, your senses in such a way that you feel less stressed. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is kind of like combine, you know, those two aspects. So for people that are a little bit more numbers driven or a little bit more um, fact driven, I want to show them, hey, there is a pathway that you need to listen to in order to be really successful, mm-hmm. no matter what success means to you, you know, because I, I love that question. I, I'm sure you've talked about that with other people, but Understanding success, success is not just measurable in numbers, Mm -hmm. right? Success is also measurable in the things that you do, you know, in conversations like we are having, because this is great. Mm -hmm. So it's the small, so it's the small aspects of life and the small aspects of business that make us actually at the end successful. It's mental and emotional. Mental and emotional. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Wow, this is absolutely beautiful. And, um, you know, obviously this is the new path that you're following and um, the new way that you're going to be helping entrepreneurs. And now you're here in the U.S., right? Yes, I am. And, and are you established here and you're going to stay here for now? Um, for the time being? Yeah. <laughs> yes. No. So, uh, yeah, we are getting established here. I will leave the country again this year for two months, going to South Africa. And um, we are traveling to Jordan soon to um, mm -hmm. so explore. But, yes, mostly in the U.S., yeah. So, so let me ask you the question that I ask, you know, everybody. Yeah. Um, after all these different waters that you have tested and now that you believe that you're settling, but I don't really believe that we actually settle in just one thing, especially yeah. people like you and I that yeah. we like, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so why are you doing this? Why, you know, this getting emotionally organized and helping people getting emotionally organized? The main reason why I'm doing it because I love working with people and I love seeing when they have a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. you know, it's very rewarding. And um, it's, it's, it's kind of also humbling because you are learning in that process, you know, and I love learning. So with everyone that I work with, I always learn and uh, I get, so much back from it it really makes me happy when i can sit you know in the evening and talk to my husband and say you know this is what happened and that person just sent me a quick text and said hey you know what i feel like happy you know or satisfied i feel like i'm moving forward it's it's just really rewarding and feeling. of course, and of course, I love to set my own hours, you know, <laughs> <laughs> of course, but, you know, so I think that's a, that's the main reason it's, it's that human exchange, you know, and like together as humans to get together and create something and see how it's developing and seeing yeah. it. Grow. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're getting here towards the end of the show. If you had a room full of entrepreneurs in front of you, what would you say to them? What would be your advice to them? Gee, okay. Um, you don't need anything in order to actually start your own business. Yes, that's actually, you know, like when I talk sometimes to some of my clients and they, they come in with big Excel sheets, you know, and like ideas of where they need to get some funding from and how not. So, of course, depending on what you're doing, but in most of the cases, you don't need anything in order to start your own business. Mm -hmm. And you should just go for it because there's no wrong or right. Just try it out and you will succeed in it. You just have to, you know, just walk the path. Amen. <laughs> there we go. Thank Thank you. That. <laughs> Big virtual hug to you. Thank you, <laughs> to you too. <laughs> to you too. Thank you so much for taking Thank the time you. to talk to me. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram, uh, just on the Kinga dot Manish, and on Facebook, and of course on my my website. Um, Which, by the way, you're redoing, and it's coming out soon, or it's already yes. out. So there is an old version right now, but I'm redoing. You know, I want to work far more with videos and just put put that out. Uh, it's just a process, of course. You know. Um, especially because I'm working on that school project at the same time. So I just need to give it a little bit of time, but yeah, it's coming up. It's slowly getting together. Yes. So yeah. moving forward is better than moon, not moving at all. So you're doing it and you're doing an amazing job with everything that you Thank have you. going on. So I really appreciate that. Thanks. Now we would love to hear from you. Tell us on the comments below. Was this advice helpful to you today? And how can you put some of what you learn into practice right away to start to see a difference in your entrepreneurial journey? Also, don't forget, if you found this podcast helpful, make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, and hit the like button so we know to make more podcasts like this one.